Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Poe, and today I'm doing week 24 of my 2023 reads. Uh, I read this week two great middle grades that were just a lot of fun, and I did DNF a poetry collection that wasn't quite working for me. I also have a mini update for you guys about my plans for this summer at the end, so I'll talk about that then. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. First, I finished A Spoonful of Time by Flora Ahn. This is a new release contemporary middle grade that has some speculative elements. So in this, we are following Maya, who is a middle grade student, and her grandmother has come to live with her and her mom, and her grandmother is dealing with Alzheimer's. Um, and that's kind of causing a lot of strain on their family. Um, and her mom is very unavailable. She's a lawyer. She's busy all the time. But Maya starts learning how to cook traditional Korean dishes from her grandmother and discovers that in her family, they can actually travel time through food so they can go back and observe old memories. They can't interact with the past thems, but they can learn about um, their history and things like that. And so this is all about her uh, exploring these different recipes. There's recipe, actual recipes throughout the book as well, um, and learning about her family history, especially since her mom doesn't really like to talk about things. Uh, I thought that the food and the culture and the family stuff was all really really excellent. The sort of time travel things in this get a little bit timey-wimey and I think that some of that was a little far-fetched and didn't quite hold together as well as it could have but other than that this was just like a really solid good middle grade that touches on all sorts of great issues and has wonderful characters so yeah I really enjoyed this and I gave it four out of five stars. Then I read Beowulf by Zach Wienersmith, who is the author of SMBC Comics, illustrated by Boulet, who is a French comic artist. This is a Beowulf retelling, but it is focused on little kids, so very, very young kids, like, you know, five years old. It is completely silly and fun and just adorable, um, but basically it beat for beat follows the Beowulf story, the first third of the story, really, um, the fight with Grendel, and it is focused on all of these little kids where they are rambunctious and they have, um, you know, this love of treats and goofing off and you know not respecting bedtimes and all these sorts of things they're just these wild kids and uh, Grindel in this is a neighbor who gets really annoyed with all of their noise and messiness and he has the ability to if he touches a kid turn them into a teenager or an adult who has no more love of fun and so it's this epic battle between the kids and this neighbor. And it is just really silly and it's written in poetic form. So it kind of follows the almost rhythm and feel of a Beowulf, you know, epic poem. Uh, and it's just a lot of fun. The illustrations in this are excellent. Um, I think that at times it does get just a little silly for me. And because it is so beat for beat on Beowulf, and I read a translation of Beowulf not that long, it was like, oh, okay. Like that just slowed it down for me a little bit, but maybe if you haven't read Beowulf recently, it'll just be like excellent. But it was just such a fun project. I thought this was really neat. And I gave it four and a half out of five stars. And then I did DNF one book, which was The Orange Tree by Dong Li, which is a poetry collection. And I think that this poetry collection is, is really interesting in terms of the topics it covers. It's covering a lot of Dong Li's sort of family history in China. And a lot of that is really interesting. But I got about 30% in and I realized I just wasn't kind of gelling with the actual poetry itself. And I think that with, with poetry, it's so personal as to what speaks to you, what kind of moves you. And for this, somehow the sort of rhythms and the way that words were used wasn't really getting an emotional response from me, which is what I look for in poetry. So even though I could kind of, um, kind of appreciate some of the topics that were being discussed, I wasn't really engaged in the poetry itself. So I realized this is probably just not the right poetry for me, and I 
went ahead and DNF'd it at 30%. Um, but that doesn't mean that this isn't going to, you know, work for other people. So I think that if you're interested in that kind of exploration of generational kind of family history in China, that's worth giving a try. Okay, so those are all of the books that I read this week, but I also wanted to give you guys just a mini update on my plans for this summer. So every year I like to give myself um, a little bit of a vacation from filming, and I am feeling like now is the right time because I just want to goof off this summer. <laughs> so I am very in the mood to play video games and board games and, you know, rewatch episodes of Great British Bake Off and just goof off. So I'm going to give myself um, about a month and a half off until the end of July, so I'll come back at the beginning of August, uh, to just goof off and not have to film or worry about handling things. Uh, so I won't be making videos during that time. I will read some, but I'm probably going to be very low-key about my reading as well, maybe just some rereads, romances, things like that. I'll wrap those up when I come back and start filming again, and I hope that you guys are going to have a great summer as well. If you guys have read any of the books that I talked about today, you want to chat with me about them, if you've read anything good, or if you have any fun summer plans, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave me a comment down below.